lately we have been talking a lot about EB1, EB2 uh, self-sponsored green court in the employment based category. The question was asked uh, for somebody with an asylum case pending with USCIS and then they find themselves uh, qualified for those type of petitions or let's say they really just apply and got an approved petition the question becomes then can I adjust status well the answer is no because remember adjustment of status is something that you do inside of the United States um, but if you have a qualifying relative, then you can do two counselor processing and get your visa from outside. We're going to explain a little bit the process in this video. My name is Bishun Gwanda, if you're new to me. Um, I'm an immigration lawyer based here in DC. I do work with individuals across the country and around the world because we're dealing with complex uh, immigration cases. If you're new to my channel, please go ahead and subscribe. If you're not new welcome back thank you for subscribing and please don't forget to hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of my videos if if you enjoy the content please go ahead and share like don't forget to comment below let's get right into that question can i just start this my case is pending with uscis but i i think i'm qualified or let's say i have an i-140 approved petition so what should I do? The answer is really, you cannot adjust status in the US because asylum is not really a, a, a status. It's basically you are with USCIS, the case is pending, and you are allowed to stay on the US territory until they decide on your case. If they decide on your case, then let's say you win the case, then Really, you can just wait for one year, then I just status um, as an asylee, right? That has been granted asylum. But let's say it's taking too long, especially now that it's taking forever, right? To get those asylum cases adjudicated with, uh, with USCIS. So, and then you find yourself qualified for I-140 or EB-2. Um, or let's say you have I-140 already approved. Or let's say you are qualified for I-140. What exactly can you do? So the thing is, in order to adjust status, there are at least five requirements, right? Being inspected or per whole to the US. Have a visa immediately available. Okay? Uh, be within lawful status at the time of adjustment or at the time adjustment is uh, being processed be within lawful status that's the problem that is gonna kill uh, your case because you have to be within a lawful status when you are applying for the Queen Court in the US and the visa has to be immediately available okay so if you have a you uh, is you have a how do you call it a a, an asylum case pending with USCIS, unfortunately, you are not considered lawfully present or you're not considered within a lawful status. What, how do you cure a lawful presence? A lawful presence is cured with uh, a waiver. But remember that waiver of a lawful presence, it's, that's what they call a provisional unlawful presence waiver. It's only cured that thing, that's unlawful presence. You have to apply for it while you're in the United States. Then you wait for it to be granted. Then you get outside of the United States. Then you go to consular processing to get the visa. But the thing is, you have to have a qualifying relative, which means you have to have either a parent or a spouse who is either a lawful permanent resident or a U.S. citizen. Those are the only two uh, qualifying relatives for the purpose of waiving unlawful presence. 601, I-601A, that's the one you need in terms of waiving a lawful presence and cancel the processing. That's one way, right? The other way is, is too risky. 
So that one is because asylum is pending with USCIS. If you get per whole travel document, permission to go outside, and you have I-140 approved, you can use that uh, advance per whole to travel outside. Remember, it has to be granted, right? And then when you within that period of time that you are outside, try to get an interview with the consulate and get your uh, immigrant visa uh, interview and get it granted while you are outside on advanced parole. But remember, advanced parole, it, um, it's a discretionary measure, right? It's, it clearly uh, says that on their application that it is not a guarantee to come back. So if you leave on advanced parole, and something really happened here in the U.S. as far as your asylum case being pending, and it gets denied, and you're outside on advanced parole, you are not going to be able to come inside. Or let's say something else, you come at the border and they deny your entry, you, you're going to have to fight to get inside. So when you choose that path of advanced parole, you are choosing it on your own risk. The question now becomes, has anybody chosen that path to go to council processing and that just started? Yes, DACA recipients have chosen that path, especially those with uh, entry without inspection. So once they get their DACA granted, they get um, pretty much, uh, let's say they get married or they get I-140 approved. What are they supposed to do? they supposed to go outside of the U.S. with advanced parole, but because they're DACA recipient, their DACA is still valid. And remember that the advanced parole, they give you a period of time, right? So they will do their best within that period of time that's given by USCIS to actually um, go through counselor processing and adjust status. It is a long shot. Can it can work yes it can work uh risk involved a lot of risk involved can i advise to do it it depends we have to study the case the in and out and see if we can make the counselor processing interview within that time frame that you have been granted advanced for whole and pretty much monitor your application so we know that there is no a denial coming your way so that you're not you're not within the uh, like too much risk for being stuck outside. So if you have questions again about this, uh, again, you can call my office to 275-121-80, email bishu.1.esq at gmail.com. Um, consultation fees apply as usual. You can also schedule your own consultation on your own time by clicking the link below in the description box. Uh, that's what I have to say about the subject. But let me add one more thing. If you're in removal proceedings, my friend, strongly discouraged to use advanced power hole because if you're in removal proceedings, it's another game. I'll answer those questions in the next video about immigration courts and the drama that goes in immigration courts. We should want to hear immigration lawyer. Until next time, bye-bye.